that sounds familiar, maybe like Virginia Cavaliers basketball, a la Tony Bennett, you'd be right. Head coach Ron Sanchez in his fifth year at Charlotte was a Virginia assistant from 2009 to 18. And that offense, that Princeton-style offense, he gives credit to his assistant coach, Kevin Smith, who played for Chris Mooney at Richmond. Mooney went to Princeton and played for Pete Carrill. Charlotte in their home whites has the opening tip. 49ers at 4-0, looking to go 5-0 for the first time in nine seasons. Rich, this is a UMass team, like all of Frank Martin's teams, that deny heavily. And so interested to see what adjustments they make because you better be ready to defend that back cut and make the guy cut through your chest. Here's Montre Gibson, one and white. Gives it off to Jackson Threadgill for three. Off the mark. They don't take a whole lot of those. Here's Wildens Levesque. Off the mark. Offensive rebound to Brandon Martin. That's the coach's son. And that's what he does best for this UMass team is extra possessions with the offensive rebounds. Skip pass. Mac Cross, who had a double double in their semifinal. Win. Levesque short on the jump hook. And Ali Khalifa. Maybe the poster child of this Charlotte team. They, they run their offense through 15 and white. Yes, their big man from Egypt. He's the best passing big man. Maybe the best passer, period, in college basketball. Milicic, 24 and white with the ball. Size advantage over Martin, and he takes advantage. He has terrific size, and it was his size, length, and instinct. He actually had the game-winning block to get them to the championship where he helped and recovered. And here they are. Here's TJ Weeks, 23, in maroon. Weeks, a contested three, and TJ Weeks is in the scoring column after scoring semifinals against Murray State. Yeah, he found his stroke against Murray State, and a great sign for UMass. They're just going to have to connect at a high clip from beyond the arc in this game if they want to win. Here's Khalifa. And Lakai Patterson, 25 in white. Khalifa, not known for scoring, takes a three-pointer there, and it's off the mark. Clearly, the UMass Minutemen want to get the ball inside. So far, they haven't had a lot of luck. And that foul's going to go on Charlotte. Here's Frank Martin in his first season in Amherst, the 56-year-old being relieved of his duties last year at South Carolina after taking them to a Final Four in 2017. Took him only about a week and a half to decide, I want back in, and UMass was the right place for him. Not surprised at all for him to have a really good job offer. He is a program builder, he's done a great job everywhere he's been. Cross leans in and rattles it home. First two for Matt Cross, the he's, junior transfer from Louisville. He's an X factor for this UMass team. Does all the grunt work. He'll silently kind of give you a double double. Really physical, good player. Gibson guarded by Weeks. 10 on the shot clock. Milicic throws it out of bounds. UMass basketball. And I can already see early on that UMass is saying, hey, you play your way, but we're going to play our way. And that is tons of ball pressure. We're going to bring the help, and we're going to have a suffocating style of play no matter what type of offense you run. Here's Noah Fernandes, the hero in the semifinals, number 11 in maroon. He's a cool customer, isn't he? He is not going to get sped up. Little cross cut from Matt Cross, and he's got back to back buckets. A 7 0 UMass run. Yeah, instead of coming off the double screen, he kind of slips between both screeners and gets to the paint. Fredgill can't get it to go. Why is Charlotte shooting so many threes? We're not used to seeing that. Well, UMass will force you into some of those, too, because they sink a lot on penetration. They show a lot of help in a different way than the pack line, but it's there. And everything working for UMass 
in the opening moments of this contest. Noah Fernandes in the scoring cup. Charlotte, one for four from the field in the early going, 0 for three from three-point range. 15-51 to go. All UMass in the first five minutes. They want to be in the championship with Adam, and they're not going to win one. Stability and leadership at the point guard spot, and he has that plus the veteran component as well with Noah Fernandes. Fernandes hit that buzzer beater against Rutgers almost one year to the day. It was November 24th of last year. He had one on Friday against Murray, and he's got his first two today. And by the way, Noah Fernandes playing with a little bit of a bulky right wrist. He had wrist surgery back in July. And there were some questions as to whether he'd, he'd even make this trip to Myrtle Beach. But he's been one of the stars of the tournament. Here he is working on Threadgood. Deep three from Weeks, and he's found his range. And if you're Charlotte, that's almost what you want UMass to do, right? Take some of those contested long threes. But right now, the Minutemen are connecting on those as well as tough twos at the rim. And they are all up in them on the other end of the court as well. I don't think Frank Martin would be angry with me saying this, but after their semifinal win, the first thing he said to us was, we can't score. We yeah. can't find a way to score. All of a sudden, they've made their last five shots. Well, they're shooting with some confidence, and, and that day off, I think, really helped them because those were two hard-fought victories. Got a day off yesterday. And again, preparing for Charlotte on two days rest is tough. But on really one day or overnight is even tougher. I think that's a little bit of an advantage for UMass if they've had time to watch tape, do their walkthroughs, as opposed to playing the very next day. Inside, now the backup big man, Isaac Conte, on the floor, number 10 for UMass. Fernandes, 10 on the shot clock. Worked his way inside, and it's going to be an offensive foul that time on Noah Fernandes. Yeah, he hooked him a little bit there, and the refs were all over it. Trying so hard to get past this defense and just a little bit too aggressive there with that offhand. But what a start for UMass. And for Charlotte, I, I think you got to be a little more patient offensively. They have not had very long possessions in the shot clock, and that's their bread and butter. Credit this UMass defense. They have taken Charlotte out of exactly what they like to do. Nothing backdoor yet for the Niners. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Bryce Williams. Left hand, lost it on the way up, but he'll go to the free throw line. And you have to be able to do that against a Frank Martin defensive team. If you try to just swing it around, you're dead meat. you got to have guys that can put it on the deck, get past that first defender. And that's exactly what they do here. In the next step of that, if you can't get all the way to the rim, again, you're going to get open looks at from three because of the way... Massachusetts likes to collapse on penetration. Bryce Williams now 11 for 12 on the season from the free, free throw stripe. Tonight, the first ever meeting between number four Kentucky and number two Gonzaga. What a nightcap it's going to be on a Sunday. Last season's National Player of the Year, Oscar Shibwe, leads the Wildcats against All-American Drew Timmy and the Bulldogs in Spokane. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. Williams goes two for two to get Charlotte off the scoring schneid. It's a 12-4 UMass lead. Now backup point guard Keon Thompson, 22 for UMass on the floor. And look for Conte, number 10 down low. He's been the most effective scorer in the post for UMass at this tournament. And now you're hearing the Charlotte faithful at full throat because their defense finally gritting its teeth a little bit. Similar to what they do at Virginia. They're going to double the post there. And so your big man's got to be ready. It's going to be the skip pass opposite that's open. But if you bobble it or if you're not sure of what you're doing, you're going to get smothered on that trap. Spirited crowd inside the HTC Center on both sides. Five reserves on the floor for Frank Martin. Rasul Diggins. The UConn transfer gets his first two. Again, if you're Charlotte, you say, hey, our defense isn't perfect, but they are taking some tough twos and contested threes. Don't lose your identity. That's Josh Aldrich, 22 in white, who's checked in 
for Ron Sanchez. Rhythm shot from number 12 in white, Jackson Threadgill, leading scorer on this team with 11 per game as his first two today. There's Thompson, a freshman. And it's a turnover. Not a lot of transition offense for the Charlotte Niners. Good passing, though, and Aldrich will go to the line off the feed from Gibson. And this is an opportunity for Charlotte with Fernandes on the bench. And then you have uh, you know, backup point guard coming in without as much experience. It's an opportunity to kind of rattle them a little bit defensively. Thompson, number 22, just a freshman on a big stage right now. Priority number one is just run the offense, take care of the basketball. Every coach in college basketball wants to be old when the season starts. Josh Aldrich, a grad student turning 23 next week. He'll celebrate his 23rd birthday on November 29th. He's a lunch pal guy for Ron Sanchez. And interestingly enough, Josh Aldrich started his college career at South Carolina Upstate where Brandon Martin, head coach Frank Martin's son, spent his first three years. They got a lane violation. Going to give them another attempt. And Aldrich makes a count. One for two from the free throw line. Seven minutes gone by. It's a 14-7 UMass lead with the basketball. UMass playing in their first in-season championship game in nine years. Here's RJ Luis. And that's a good sign for Frank Martin because he's been up and down in each of the four games they played this year. Yeah, that would be an understatement. He has been Jekyll and Hyde, which you... Understand from a young guy, but if they're going to win a championship, they need some point production from 12, who is certainly capable. Had 18 points in the first round of this tournament, and then a goose egg in the second round. And there's a three-pointer, rare as it is, by Josh Aldrich. Charlotte is 273rd in the nation in three-pointers made coming into this game. Conte, left hand. Well, you just shouldn't get beat off the dribble. Conte, nor are any of the five men from Massachusetts a pick-and-pop threat. You, you want to make them shoot. So if you're giving them a step, you shouldn't certainly get beat off the dribble. Aldrich tries it again. Offensive rebound by Milicic. And they're going to get the foul on Luis. Well, UMass has been bringing the fight up. We're both Latino head coaches, and there's not a lot of us in college basketball. As a matter of fact, we're looking at 50% of the total number of Latin American head coaches in college hoops. Mike Bellato from Arkansas State, Tony Pujol from North Alabama, and the two men vying for a championship here in Myrtle Beach. I'm not sure there's anybody that enjoyed South Carolina's Final Four run outside of South Carolina fans than Coach Sanchez. That's he says, right. I still call him Final Four Frank every time I see him. Levesque comes away with the rebound. An eight-point UMass lead, shooting 80% from the field so far. Yeah, that's the story of the game. Eight for ten against a UMass team that's really not that efficient on the offensive end. That one was pinned against the backboard by Bryce Williams, but then a foul on Charlotte. Yeah, they have struggled at times to finish out the rim. They've gotten some good looks for the big man, and, and Levesque's just got to put this one in on the first opportunity. Good block, but they're below-the-rim finishers at UMass. That's just who they are, but they got to use their shoulder. Make those physical tough twos down there. Seen a lot of activity early on offensively from Wildens Levesque, who has his first point of the afternoon. Yeah, he's a guy that can really dominate a game. I don't know that he can dominate a season or several games in a row. He's a little bit of an up and down guy, but he's come with Frank Martin from South Carolina. And let me tell you something 
If you're offering Martin's respect, he's not going to say, hey, let's do it again. So Levesque is really giving them a presence down low. Wilton Levesque had a tournament record five blocks in their first round win against the Colorado Buffaloes. Got his first two of the afternoon from the free throw line, and that extends the lead to 10. 13th all-time meeting between these two programs. The first since 2013. Easy to forget that Charlotte was part of the A-10 a while back. Well, easy to forget is Khalifa on the court because they have not involved him much at all. Ilicic blocked by the rim. Here comes Matt Cross up the right side. Again, a concerted effort to get the ball inside to Wilden's Levesque. If I'm cross at 33 in red, I, I'm probably not giving that one up so soon. You got the big man Khalif out there, 6'11", trying to guard you on the perimeter. Cross is explosive enough. He, he's not always quick for his position, but when the right matchup is there, he can get past them. UMass doing so well offensively that has them almost at will against a, a Charlotte defense that's 15th in the nation in scoring defense. Well, th they aren't being hesitant or lackadaisical. They, they are being aggressive, and they are being violent with their cuts and, and tough with their post-ups and putting their head down as opposed to letting Charlotte just dictate where they go. Here's Weeks. Guarded by Threadgo. And it helps out there just making shots. <laughs> I'm not trying to simplify that much. But it, it's, it's rolling for him right now. Five on the shot clock. Cross for three with a hand in his face, no less. Yeah, it's just contagious right now for UMass. Largest lead of the game for the Minutemen. Here's Milicic working on the freshman Tafara Gapari. Now Milicic from deep, got it. Rare three-pointer again, second one of the afternoon for Charlotte. I thought they missed him early on an open back cut, but they'll take the three over the two any day of the week. Nice shot. And Levesque took his eye off the ball when Khalifa fell down, and then he proceeded to travel with the basket. We talked about Cross being sort of an X factor for this team. I mean, he does all the dirty work, and this time he's going to show you his range. And he came in, missed the first game of the season, played great against Towson, and been really solid since. And this time Milicic just squares up, catch, shoot. That's what you call being shot ready. That was Igor Milicic's second three-pointer this season. He was one for ten before that shot. Yeah, he, he, much better than those percentages show. Now Khalifa, looking for the back door, but nothing's open. Ten on the shot clock. Milicic, the drive and the bucket. You're going to get the dribble handoff from Khalifa. If you defend the back door, then what that tells the offense is, okay, I got an advantage, I can get a handoff, which is also a little bit of a ball screen as well off the big man. Martin lost the handle, and Milicic comes away with it. Lukai Patterson. Khalifa spin move. They call him a unicorn in Charlotte. Oh, catches the defender off guard. They're thinking he's always looking to pass. He says, how about this? I'll show you got a little spin move. A unicorn from the Queen City. And Charlotte's back within six. Back. Now Charlotte a chance to add to a 7-0 run. There's the back door. Threadgill can't pay it off. Here comes Fernandes. Defensive foul, good defensive positioning by Igor Milicic, who's been the best player on the floor for the Niners. We haven't said his name much, but you can't forget about him. Down low, 
And I, I just have been so impressed with his ability to see the court. I'm a little bit older than our buddy King McClure. I was kind of going for the Arvita Sabonis cop. He said, no, man, we got to go Joker. We had to educate him over some chicken and waffles yesterday on who Sabonis was. I'm with you on that. Shout out to King for first mentioning that in the early round games. But, yeah, there's a little Arvita in there, too. That one off the mark. Weeks with the rebound. There's Fernandes. Chucky Kemp picked up breakfast, so we can't leave him out. Yeah. <laughs> Respect your elders, right? Yeah, that's right. Coming up on seven minutes to go in the first half of this championship tilt. And TJ Weeks has woken up this week right. from three-point range. Yeah, I mean, he's getting to a point. If you're Charlotte, you got to say, hey, we might have to be there on the catch when he's 25 feet out and make him put it on the deck because that's certainly his comfort zone is catch and stick. Ten for 18 from three this season for Weeks. And here's R.J. Luis at the other end. Maybe that gets him a little off track. And it's the ball pressure and aggressiveness of UMass that has really flustered Charlotte right now and gotten them out of sync. The hard hat type mentality that makes you think that they don't like to run and gun, but they certainly do, and you're seeing how aggressive they can be on the offensive end and freedom that he'll give his team. What have you seen from R.J. Luis? That, is it just the fact that he's such a young kid, a freshman, that he's had such an up-and-down start to his career? I think that's what it is. And I, what, what he just did there of letting his defense dictate his offense is what you really got to have, not letting if the ball goes in the hoop or not affect how you play on this end of the court. That's how you stay on the court is with deflections from Frank Martin. Here's Lukai Patterson from close range, can't get it to go. Got to put those in. A good move and a good post up. Just didn't finish. Charlotte looking to go 5-0 and for the first time in nine seasons. But they've got their hands full with the Minutemen so far. Uh-oh, look out if R.J. Luis starting to get things cooking. Pollard says it's going to be UMass basketball. It's just a clinic defensively right now with the ball pressure and the deflections. And then on the offensive end, there's Louise. I mean, this guy's got such a bright future. And when you need guys that can just go get you a bucket and get it off the bounce, even when there's good defense, 12 is one of those guys for Frank Martin. UMass has converted 12 of their last 14 field goal attempts. Fernandes guarded by Gibson. Step back three. Around and out. But they track down the offensive rebound. A fresh 20 seconds. Martin gets three of those a game. He's already got two. Luis jump stop. Gets his own miss. And just working overtime. RJ Luis punching the clock but coming up empty. And Frank Martin looking for a foul. He's not going to get one. Eight to shoot. Khalifa will. And it's off the back iron. Weeks the rebound. And you see how Charlotte does not really send anybody to the offensive glass. And so they get everybody back to set their defense. There's not going to be many transition opportunities for you guys. Now under four minutes to go. Under four and a half minutes. Eight on the shot clock. Five to shoot. Brandon Martin got it off. Didn't touch rim. Shot clock violation. As we go to our final. Nope. 408 on the clock. So we're still eight seconds ahead of our final media timeout. Charlotte will have the ball with 408 to go in the midst of a four and a half minute scoring drought. What's the Minuteman defense done so well to stifle the Charlotte offense? You're looking at some of it here, the ball pressure. They have not cared too much about, uh, they've cared about the back door. They've just defended it extremely well. And it's hard to get off that back door pass when there's so much pressure on the passer. Spin move, Gibson. Lost it, got it back. 
Now a step in three from Bryce Wilson. Or Bryce Williams, check that. A three for number three. Levesque from the free throw line. That's a better job. Instead of trailing for the three, Levesque trails for the 15-footer. A much higher percentage look for the big man. The lead is a dozen for the Minutemen. Now Williams blocked from behind by Martin. Boy, Martin's quietly really had a nice impact on this game, doing a bunch of the little things. Pull up, contested. And Threadgill tracks it down. Here's Fultz. The oh, oh, throwdown! He hung in there and just waited on that thing and said, How about with the left? Charlotte loves to score close to the rim. That's about as close as you're going to get. lost the handle and gets a foul call. There's another potential Sports Center top 10 nominee you just saw. No question. Just the trade. I know you got a lot of good ones left. But basketball season's amongst us. And we've had some great ones here in Myrtle Beach and upsets all over the place. Not the two teams we expected to see here in the championship. But you're seeing right now. Deserve to be here. Yeah, if you're just tuning into this championship game and you're going UMass and Charlotte in the championship, this Myrtle Beach Invitational has been a microcosm of all of college basketball in the first week or two of the regular season. Upsets everywhere. Nothing should surprise you. to shoot. Charlotte's offense, judicious to say the least. Three to shoot. Williams, air ball, Levesque grabs it. And so who's the guy for Charlotte that can penetrate the paint without getting a backdoor feed? Who can do it off the bounce? That's what you're going to have to do against this UMass defense. You hear Frank Martin yelling slice. Luis, the six on the shot clock from the elbow. Good hands by Threadgill forcing the turnover. And the freshman, Fultz, oh, goes up. Gosh. They oh. will not count it. I, that's, that's good to me, man. I mean, that's an amazing shot. They're going to talk it over. Yep, and they're going to change the call, count it. Good job huddling up by the officials because here's the foul and the shot is up. Amazing. Frank Martin really upset right now with the freshman Louise. It's the self-inflicted wounds on the other end. Just can't turn the ball over in the paint. And Isaiah Fultz will go to the line. Sophomore out of Gainesville, Georgia. Coach Sanchez called him the unsung hero in their win against Tulsa. He was the primary defender on Sam Griffin, the top scorer for the Golden Hurricane. Don't see a lot of offense from folks we did there. And there it is again. The freshman, Keon Thompson coming in. Got to run the show. Nice job, post feet. Soft touch, Levesque. He has six in the first half. Those are sort of hidden points, if you will. Maybe not hidden, but, you know, when you can get a plus two with your freshman point guard while Fernandes gets a little bit of breather, that's a big victory for Frank Martin. Under a minute to go. Charlotte would love to get this deficit to single digits. Look at Cross fighting down low. Man. Almost every possession under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Patterson, clean look, knocks it down. First three of the game for Lakai Patterson. And the lead has been sliced to seven. Six second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. There's a turnover. The no look. Oh, 
Oh, and Threadgill missed the bunny. Last shot time for UMass, and it'll be a use it or lose it timeout for Frank Martin. We'll step aside as the teams huddle up for the final 12 seconds of this championship first half. Beach Invitational, and maybe the surprise of this first half, how well UMass has shot it from the field. Yeah, if you're Coach Sanchez, you get one stop here, you're going to halftime feeling pretty good. Like, hey, we haven't played our best, but if you can only be down seven, you got to think UMass is not going to continue to shoot the lights out the way they have been. Last shot time, and Folks gives up the foul on the floor with fouls to give. Charlotte doesn't shoot a lot of three-pointers they have today. They also don't foul a lot. I'm a little surprised. Don't go a little offense or defense here with put Fernandes in the game. He's one of your best one-on-one -on -one players with the ball in his hands. Third game in four days for these kids. With three to go. Cross. Short three. Number 33, Matt Cross, ends the first half with a step-back triple from the top of the key and beyond. He's in double digits with 10. Year. And, and they are just some shot-making guys, and Cross was clutch, especially with one right there at the buzzer. If I'm Frank Martin, though, the message to my team is, guys, the shooting was icing on the cake. That's not what has us a lead. What has us a lead is the defense. Don't start thinking we can outscore this team. And UMass has built a 10-point lead despite the fact their top scorer, Noah Fernandes, with just two points in the first half. He throws the ball away to start the second half. Here comes Charlotte. What do they have to do offensively to get on track? Yeah, I think they've got to be willing to put their head down and get to the basket. I like the deep post touch here. Try to operate a little bit more inside out. There's Khalifa. The offense runs through him. Patterson. That he's aggressive to the cup and gets the foul. It, it's not the same pack line that Charlotte runs, but there's a lot of the same components when you talk about how much help is coming. You must penetrate under control because once you get past your first man, there's another layer to it. You've got to find the open man on the kick. Ten to shoot for the Minutemen. Playing up the line. Patterson almost had the intercept. They get the rebound. Now Gibson looking to push. Khalifa swatted into the stands by Wilden Flavec. Khalifa did a really respectable job running the court. Not typically somebody that's going to run that slot there, but does a good job, Flavec. Times it up perfectly, protecting that rim. Patterson will inbound. Kai Patterson held in check, just three points in the first half. There's Khalifa, bounce pass, Greg Gill, and one. That's the Charlotte offense we didn't see much of in the first half, Dan. Yeah, and they, they knifed him up there in that zone look. Frank Martin likes to go zone on these baseline out of bounds. And then he just didn't communicate. They lost that short corner. And that's where you want to get the ball against the zone is in that short corner. And even better, when you get it to the short corner with such a talented passing big man like Khalifa. The assist from Khalifa to Threadgill, the closest of friends on this Charlotte 49ers team. As a matter of fact, as we mentioned, Khalifa is from Egypt. He spends the holidays with the Threadgill family in Concord, New North Carolina. They'd love to talk Turkey over a title <laughs> coming up on Thursday. Come the Niners again. The one more. Gibson. Short. 
The tip from Milicic, no good. You have to be smarter on the other end if you're UMass. Some four shots, some ill-advised turnovers, and that's a bad angle. I mean, they like to do that one to five pass, but if Levesque doesn't have a clean seal, you cannot throw it from that angle. Weeks gets it in. 20 on the shot clock. More than two minutes gone by. UMass still looking for its first bucket in the second half, and they get it from their leader. He's just so patient. He doesn't blow by a lot of guys. And it's not like he just kills you with the first step, but it's just methodical when he gets inside the arc. Fernandes, preseason second team, all A-10. Gibson found the seam. That's what you have to do against this ball pressure. you got to be able to put your head down, go, and read if the help comes or not. Well done by one and White. Showing some touch. He's got a season high eight now, does Wilden's Levesque. He's been able to find the soft spot on this sinking defense at times. That's his second 15 foot jumper. First one from free throw line, that one from short corner. Beautiful bounce pass from Khalifa to Threadgill, then out to Patterson, but they come up empty. Weeks forced it up there. Milicic. Gibson, off the window, not this time. Cross spots up. Offense hard to come by on both ends of the floor in the second half. And Milicic clears. Threadgill. Great look from Jackson Threadgill to Igor Milicic, and Milicic will go to the line. Milicic to be able to guard two guys in about a half a second span, but man, did he recover quickly and defend that three ball. There are closeouts, and then there are closeouts, and that closeout clinched the win for Charlotte and advanced them to the moment they are in right now, the championship game of the Myrtle Beach Invitational, and they've got the lead for UMass down to single digits. It's just eight, and Charlotte's got a puncher's chance, but we touched on this at the top of this telecast. They are a very slow-tempo yeah. team, not necessarily the type of team that performs well when having to come back from large deficits. Right, and this isn't a team that you just expect, oh, they're going to go on a 10-0 run in the next two minutes. They're just going to keep chipping away at it with many runs here and there. UMass fortunate on that one. Williams got his hand on the ball. UMass retains possession. Eight to shoot. Now five on the shot clock. Good defensive stand by the Niners. You just got to make yourself available on that double team. Guys weren't finding the open spot. Levesque had nowhere to go. They go for that backdoor cut again from Khalifa to Threadgill. That time it goes out of bounds. Now he likes to throw when the defender's head is turned, almost like a quarterback is finding his receiver when the defensive back has his back to him. But I, mean, I can't think of one time UMass has given up a backdoor cut in this game. Certainly not been a big part of it because of their ability to take it away. Once, maybe twice, but certainly not enough for Ron Sanchez's team to get back in this game or at least get on top. Right. And it's not just defending the back cutter. Again, it's pressuring the ball and the passer. When he's uncomfortable, he can't make an accurate pass or a good read either. 
UMass has led for virtually the entire contest. They've only trailed in this game for one minute, and that was early in the first half. Now subs on the floor. All five spots for Frank Martin. Three on the shot clock. And for the second straight possession, it's a shot clock violation. Well, I think UMass has Charlotte's attention on the three-point line. You're seeing just a little bit more pressure, a little more extended defense there to where UMass is not able to get up even those contested three-point shots that were so successful for them in the first half. Josh Aldrich. Here's Isaiah Folks. The tip no good. And here comes Thompson for the Minutemen. Conte, left hook, no good. Lukai Patterson comes up with it. Shovels it to Threadgill. And for the second time today, Jackson Threadgill misses in transition at close range. Well, that's four points in the row that Charlotte has left on the table. Good hands by Bryce Williams. Gives it up. Threadgill gets fouled, taking it strong to the cup. Well, he can do that. We've seen, his, seen him finish above the rim in this tournament. He didn't want to risk missing another layup. I love how he attacks the rim here. And that all starts with the deflection. I believe that was Williams on the other end that got the deflection originally and then led the fast break. They just are so disciplined in those passing lanes and that help position. You can't get stuck and pick up the ball or there's nowhere to go. Jackson Threadgill, the leading scorer on this Charlotte team, averaging 11 coming in. Held to just four points so far. Tonight, the first ever meeting between number four Kentucky and number two Gonzaga. Oscar Shibwe toe-to-toe -to -toe with Drew Timmy as they take on the Bulldogs in Spokane. Coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. As I like to call it, the, the Tim Tebow of college basketball and, of Oscar Shibwe and, and the big Lebowski of college basketball, Drew Timmy. They each get it done in their own way. What an exciting matchup. We've talked about that game a lot this past week. Who do you like in that game? Oh, I, I like Kentucky. Just a little bit more experience, guard play. I think Antonio Reeves is a guy that a lot of people don't know about yet. But he's a transfer, a big-time scorer. Didn't play particularly well in the Michigan State game, but he can get buckets. Five on the shot clock. Luis gets it off. Milicic the rebound, and there's a foul on the floor. And it's going to go on Charlotte. Igor Milicic, his second. Uh, Milicic doesn't really like the calls. He boxes out. Oh, okay, I see. They, they got five with the push in the back. So Rasul Diggins will trigger the inbounds under the UMass basket. The lead has been whittled to seven. Here's Luis, and he traveled with him. And Frank Martin's going to go back to his bench. This is a really tough game for any freshman. I, I sympathize with him. I've been there before, Rich. One of the worst spots to be in is, is a reserve freshman. A lot of times you come in the game, you haven't had a chance to go up and down, and especially in this type of unique matchup with this pack line defense and so much help and strategy involved, it, it's just... A style of play that they have never faced before in their entire playing career. Wholesale changes. The starters back on the floor for Frank Martin. Oh, he missed the cutter. You don't hear that too often from this Niners offense. Eight to shoot. Bryce Williams does. Offensive rebound. Milicic. Patient at the rim. Igor Milicic in double digits. And the lead is just five. And UMass is now on the struggle bus on both ends of the floor. Like we said, they just keep 
coming at you does Charlotte's not gonna be some explosive big run uh, Getting out to the UMass shooters deeper quicker more aggressively UMass has not gotten a clean look hardly at all in this second half And some of that too is look UMass made some tough contested shots in the first half that I really didn't think was very sustainable and you're seeing the law of averages Start to benefit Charlotte as well Here they play that zone again on the baseline out of bounds. See if Charlotte can take advantage like they did the last opportunity. No Khalifa for Ron Sanchez and the Niners. Josh Aldrich on in his stead. Five to shoot. Milicic does, but he's on the sideline. We've seen that a handful of times in this tournament. Yeah. Gotta educate the puppies. Yeah, as they I know say. It, it just amazes me that it seems like it gets called once every game. So a turnover for Charlotte, just their seventh turnover of this championship contest. Khalifa back for the Niners. 15 in white. 10 on the shot clock. Look at all that help. Nowhere to go. Yep. I mean, Intercepted. Tipped away by the folks. And here comes Williams. And Weeks gets the, weak, the rebound. And again, you, you get that missed shot, and Charlotte's already back. I mean, Fernandes, no opportunity to push anything in transition. Creates his own, not that time. Yeah. Typically, you don't like a no-pass offense. But given the way things are going, I, I don't mind the shot at all early by Fernandes. A six-minute-plus scoring drought right now for the UMass Minutemen. They still lead by five with coming up on ten minutes to go. Milicic. And there's just no airspace no. to speak of on either end of the floor. The other thing that's got to be so frustrating for Frank Martin, he always looks at the free throw attempts when he gets a stat sheet. Just four free throw attempts for UMass. Fernandes. And it's right about that time that Noah Fernandes starts taking over a game. And you, you got to make some outside shots if you're going to beat Charlotte, given their defense, and UMass has done that so far, despite being cold in the second half. Fernandes with seven. And the lead is back to eight. Gibson missed it from close range. Well, they have missed some bunnies, haven't they, Rich? I mean, this should be a tie game if Charlotte converts their layups. Martin to cross off the window. Back-to-back -back buckets now for UMass. Well, and credit Levesque on that. He sealed his man, which created the driving opportunity for Martin and got the defense out of whack. And just like that, it's back to a double-digit lead for the Minutemen. 4-0 runs feel like 10-0 runs in this game, doesn't it? <laughs> Tough take by Bryce Williams. He hits the deck hard and will go to the line for his efforts. And you'll see how Martin is able to get an opening to the rim and then spoon feed his teammate cross. Look at the big man down low, Levesque. He's going to seal off Khalifa, and that's what allows Martin to get to the paint and Charlotte unable to rotate to help the helper. Levesque, you know, he's hadn't been much of a stat sheet stuffer throughout this tournament, but quietly he has been terrific in this game. Eight points, seven boards and really giving Khalifa some problems with his physicality. Williams has eight. The NFL returns to Mexico with our Week 11 Monday Night Football matchup. Christian McCaffrey and the Niners taking on DeAndre Hopkins and the Cardinals, an important NFC West game. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app with coverage beginning at six with Monday Night Countdown. So we go from these 49ers to those 49ers tomorrow night.
these 49ers are down eight, 47-39 with under nine minutes to go in the Myrtle Beach Invitational Championship. Tough shot by the lefty, T.J. Weeks. And Threadgill did all he could. He knew he had to close out on Weeks, given Weeks three successful three-point attempts in the first half. Weeks with a tough basket. Now Khalifa. Backing down Isaac Conte. And that foul is going to go on the freshman, Luis. Cross is going to get a blow on the bench as DeAndre Dominguez checks in for Frank Martin. I wouldn't mind seeing Charlotte try to post up Patterson on Fernandes. He's not a great post defender against bigger guards. That's one way to get in the lane there. But, you know, the, these Charlotte guards aren't necessarily explosive. Gibson, Patterson. But I do think they've got some advantages with their size if you can post up your guards down low. If nothing else, just lead to a good offensive rebounding opportunity. Charlotte coming into this contest undefeated at 4-0. Only 30-plus teams in all of Division I basketball are 4-0 at this point. If they win today and take this title home, they'll be 5-0 for the first time in nine years. But UMass has been a staunch opposition to that goal. Looking for their first in-season in tournament championship in that same amount of time. The last time they won an in-season tournament, it was over in Charleston, about two hours north of here, back in 2013. Fernandes. Ten to shoot. Good hands by Bryce Williams. Knocked it out of bounds and it stayed UMass basketball. And we have reached our under eight timeout. UMass getting now composed throughout the course of a game and just takes his opportunities. And you, you felt like the previous game that he, he needed to force the issue a little bit, but then he waited for his moment, hit a couple pull up jumpers, and then of course the big time three point buzzer beater against Murray State to send them to the finals. Now a dead ball foul on Charlotte. And that'll reset the clock to 20 yeah, seconds. That, that's no, the we big have nine on there. the shot clock. Right, yeah. And Fernandes slipped. And another foul is called. You hear Coach Sanchez yeah. telling his team who's frustrated. He's saying, next play, next play. I love it. You know, don't look at me and tell me about the ref making a bad call. Move on to the next play. Time is quickly becoming a factor for the Charlotte 49ers who play one of the slower tempos in all of Division I basketball. They find themselves down eight with 7.46 to go. That's a great point, Rich. I mean, some teams are just not built to come back from large deficits with little time. And he's got to call that an offensive yeah. foul. Noah Fernandes, Fernandes. Yep. called for the leg kick on that three-point attempt. That's his third. Yeah, that, that's a tricky one because, you know, with the new rule change, you can either call a flop if they feel like it's a flop or if it's actual contact, they're going to call that the offensive foul. But if it's a flop, there is no warning this year, and it's a Class B, you get the free throw and the ball. So a lot of ways, you, look, you'll take the foul, but you're probably hoping for a flop if you're Coach Sanchez. And Charlotte's in the bonus now after that Fernandes foul, which means they'll be shooting free throws on every subsequent UMass foul, which stops the clock, helps their cause. And just another missed opportunity down low. I know that wasn't a clean look. They're now 7 of 16 on layups in Charlotte. 
skip pass, Diggins left all alone. And that's the open spot when they double the post. It's the opposite wing. Beautiful find. Seven minutes to go. Khalifa. He's usually the passer. This time the recipient is Khalifa. Boy, they needed that one in a big way. Khalifa usually getting this pass, but does a little back cut of his own and catches Conte off guard a little bit. Help a little bit too late. It's been a quiet afternoon for Ali Khalifa, or as they like to call him on the Charlotte campus, Prince Ali. Just four points, one rebound, and maybe most importantly, only two assists for the leading assist man on this team. But he got the bucket and the bump, and he makes it pay. So five points now for Khalifa. And it's a 52-44 UMass lead with the ball. Frank Martin testing his reserves again. Only one starter on the floor, that's Levesque with the ball. Four on the shot clock. Diggins hoists it up. And Charlotte comes away with it, and it's going to be a foul on Dominguez. And a good job by Lukai Patterson, thinking better of trying to take on DeAndre Dominguez when they hit the deck. Yeah, it's just so hard to get a clean look. You see it there. And when you can get a clean look, you got to take advantage. We'll go back to the last play. When you post it there, bringing a double team, you can't throw it back to your own sideline. The pass is the skip. Great job by Conte. You have to take one dribble out of it just as he did, then skip it. If you keep it on your side of the court, you're done. Kai Patterson steps to the free throw line for the first time in this championship game. Nine for 12 from the field, from the free throw line this season, and he misses the front end. But they get the offensive board, something they haven't done much of today. They're missing layups, they're missing free throws. They can't ask much more of their defense. I mean, they've held UMass to about 30% in this second half. They've got to start making some buckets here. Khalifa! There you go. Now all of a sudden it's Khalifa as the cutter in this offense. A little counter by Coach Sanchez. Back-to-back -back buckets for the big man. 15 and white. Dominguez. What a pass by Levesque. Defender gets caught on the high side in the rare paint touch opportunity for the post. Well done by UMass. Back yelling ice, ice. There's the give and go. Thread Gill back out. Patterson off the mark on the three. Loose ball. UMass has it. Dominguez at the other end. Every time it looks like Charlotte's going to make a run, UMass has an answer. Two things you rarely get, get against Charlotte. A transition bucket and a post feed for a layup. UMass got it back to back possessions to extend this lead. And then another Charlotte turnover, their seventh of the game, gives UMass the ball with a 10 point lead and five minutes to go. The collision really caught Charlotte off guard there. They weren't able to get back in transition. Two hands on the ball, and he's getting out of the game right away. Coach Martin won't stand for being complacent. I mean, offensively, you got to think, Rich, they're six points away from winning this game, right? Like, you, you don't feel like Charlotte can get up much past 60 given the pace of this game, so you can't have those empty possessions. Well, we knew it would be a defensive struggle between these two teams. Neither team has given up 70. As a matter of fact, Charlotte's only given up more than 60 once.
There's Khalifa again. He's come alive. Nine points for Ali Khalifa. But an eight-point lead in this game feels like 18 for UMass. Wild shot. Comes up empty. Here's Folks on the other end. Jump stop, teardrop. Maybe ill-advised from Isaiah Folks. And they're going to get a foul on Charlotte as well. Who knows how long and what a start it would be to the Frank Martin era as well as the rebuild for Coach Sanchez. So both of these teams and these rosters know what it's like to be on the other end of these tournaments. See who can close this one out. Opening up a lot of eyes in their respective conferences. Charlotte preseason number nine of 11 teams in Conference USA. UMass preseason number eight in a loaded A-10. Playing well above those expectations here in Myrtle Beach. Martin try to shovel it back to cross. Seven on the shot clock. Tipped and taken away by the Charlotte D. No idea what he saw there. You, you can't just put a one-handed pass of your head into traffic. Cross has been so good. Bad decision there, though. Here's Khalifa. Williams for three. Looked good off his hand. Yeah, and a really good read on that screen for the step back. Got himself open. Couldn't knock it down. If you're UMass, eat some clock here. No early shots or turnovers. Ball is in the hands of the right man, number 11 for UMass, Noah Fernandes. Nice feed, Levesque, no, too strong. And they're saying it's going to be Charlotte basketball with 2.55 left. So knowing what you know and what you've seen from this Frank Martin defense, what does Charlotte need to do to get a bucket? Well, I'd like to see some more action on the sideline where they actually ran Khalifa off some screens. A little bit of a trick play. There's Khalifa setting the screen. Folks. Out of bounds. That was Gibson. I think they're going to get Levesque Rich on the, on the foul. He came over to help with that chest out. That'll be the second on Wildens Levesque, and now the double bonus for Charlotte. So Trey Gibson will have two free throws. Try and slice into this UMass lead, and he can't hit it. Tuesday we'll have the exclusive reveal of the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese Davis and the gang will bring him down from top to bottom, 7 Eastern. For Pacific on ESPN and the app. Gibson goes one for two. And it's a 56-49 UMass lead with the ball coming up on two and a half to go. And Frank Martin is in full Frank Martin mode, as he has been since the opening tip. And Andes as well. UMass is 7 of 13 on the game, where they've really needed it, because they've only gotten to the free throw line four times. They've turned it over 16 times. But it's been the three ball that has really helped them not only build this lead, but keep it. There's Fernandes. And a hand check foul. will go on Isaiah Fultz, his third. How comforting and what a luxury it is for Frank Martin to know at the end of the game you got your closer 11 Fernandes that you can give the ball to He's gonna make the best decision And he's so calm and composed That's only 16 fouls on Charlotte Fernandes 10 on the shot clock Ducks in and can't get it to go, but he gets it back. A fresh 20 seconds coming up on two minutes left. It was a nice fake. I thought he picked up that pivot foot. Got away with one. Back off the mark. Luis. Oh, they wave it off. Now, R. 
RJ Luis, who had seven first half points, but has been held scoreless in the second half, will step to the line. U UMass is just relentless with their effort on the offensive glass. And Charlotte's done a nice job, only nine offensive rebounds, but it's just that constant effort to create those extra possessions in a game where each of them matters so much, especially when you can kill some clock with a lead. RJ Luis just five for 10 from the free throw line this season. He makes the first. Eight for Luis, and the lead is eight for UMass with a buck 52 to go. Didn't look like a freshman there. The lead is nine. UMass looking for their first in-season tournament title in nine years. Khalifa for three. And a timeout called by Ron Sanchez. So Charlotte has two timeouts remaining. UMass with two timeouts as well. Both teams in the bonus. Charlotte will be shooting two free throws on every subsequent UMass foul. That was the third option on this play. They're going to look for the baseline corner drift. UMass takes it away. Then it's the comeback three. They take that away. And then it's the pop. I mean, you want to see a quick hitter with multiple options for three? What a play call by Sanchez. Well defended by UMass up until the end. Well, they couldn't get out to the pop man quick enough. That's just the first Charlotte three-pointer of the second half. They only have five on the game, but if this holds up, six-point game, a minute 40 to go, they're going to have to start thinking three at some point sooner than later. you expect to see some full court pressure? I do. And if you can, you, you want to try to keep it out of Fernandez's hands. See if you can't make a perimeter player bring it up. Folks, a defensive stopper, five and white, guarding Fernandez. 90 seconds until a championship is crowned. Luis, well, it's early right. in the shot clock. Yeah. It's a freshman mistake. Even though you're open, doesn't mean you should take it. Kill clock. And you don't have to be a lip reader to know what Frank Martin just said. You can't rely on a back cut or your offense to get you an open look. You got to rely on your straight line drives, knowing that the help is coming. Make a physical play at the rim, expecting the contact to come. Here's Khalifa, the handoff to Patterson. Charlotte almost lost it. Now Fernandes. All over Patterson. Gibson almost lost it. Ten on the shot clock. They give it away. And UMass has it. Scramble for the ball. And they're going to call a jump ball. It will stay Charlotte basketball. A really ugly possession there. But give credit to UMass more than... They can win this game without even scoring 60. I thought they might need 60-62, but with the way they're defending, they just need to keep getting their stops. The Charlotte 49ers defense has given up more than 60 points just once. That happened in the semifinals against Tulsa. The other three opponents failed to crack 60. Spin move, and a pretty one by Gibson. It's a four-point game. Fernandes gets it across half court. Fifteen on the shot clock. And the foul's going to go on Gibson. Sending Noah Fernandes to the free throw line. Well, they certainly got what they wanted on the offensive end. They got the mismatch and took advantage of the big man Levesque out on the perimeter, took him to the glass. And I thought defensively they got what they wanted. You make Fernandes give the ball up to Levesque at half court. 
why send a double team at Levesque? Like, make him be the primary ball handler instead of giving him an option to throw it right back to his point guard. Now, here's a little fly in the ointment for Frank Martin. You want the ball in the hands of Noah Fernandes. He's only a 59% free throw shooter. But he calmly nails that one. With his clutch jeans, though, you throw those percentages out the window. I want 11 on the line if I'm Frank Martin. Crunch time is Fernandes time. He's got them both. Nine points for Noah Fernandes. I'd look for a similar play from Charlotte where they're going to try this baseline three-point attempt. They've got some counters to it as well. as well. See, he's looking for that baseline. He's got Milicic open for three, too strong. Patterson gets the offensive board. 17 seconds to go, it's out of bounds. And it'll stay Niners basketball. UMass has led for all but 20 seconds of this game. Well, Louise does a nice job of taking away that corner three and actually a good pass to wrap it around to the wing. Here's Khalifa, steps back. Fires a three short. It's going to go out of bounds. And they're going to say it's still Charlotte basketball with 10.8 to go. UMass looks like they're going to get out of here with a win, but Frank Martin's still not happy, saying the ball's right there. Just get it. Don't and right under the Charlotte basket. Gibson tried to throw it off a Minuteman player and did so successfully. I thought his foot was out of bounds. I think they can only rule where the deflection was, though. Therefore, Charlotte gets it. 10.8 to go. Khalifa, they got to hurry. Milicic, too strong. Levesque grabs the rebound. Loose ball, out of bounds. And with 3.6 seconds left, it will be UMass basketball. And they could feel it here inside the HTC Center. Getting it out but coming out victorious the Frank Martin way. At the beginning of this season, Frank Martin said, failure has brought us all together. And now they are 3.6 seconds away from an in-season tournament title here in Myrtle Beach. They get it in, Levesque. No foul from Ron Sanchez and the Charlotte 49ers. It's been a hot minute, but the Minutemen our in-season tournament champions for the first time in nine years.